be making basics. What's going on YouTube, Beat Making Basics, back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe because we're coming back to back with bangers. Now today's video, I'm gonna be going ahead and showing you the importance of quantization, uh, why you should quantize, and the difference between some of the metrics in um, quantization when you look at like Logic Pro 10 or whatever. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now look, I created this beat right here. It's literally just a simple arrangement, or not arrangement, simple loop here. As you can see, it's four tracks, got a kick, a clap, a hi-hat, and a piano. And I did not quantize any of these, all right? I literally just played everything natural. And so it's a little bit off. I'm going to go ahead and play it just for you for a second, and then we're going to demonstrate, you know, the diff you know best quantization practices um, after that. Let's check this out. So like listening to it, you're like, man, okay, I, I it kind of has a little bit of a vibe to it, but because some of the notes are played off, it literally makes that beat sound a little more whack than what it, it really is. You know what I'm saying? So for people who are just getting started, quantization can literally change the game for how your beats are going to sound. Now let's go ahead and break it down. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and just double click right here and pull up all of the MIDI notes, okay? And the MIDI notes are basically these notes that you see right here within Logic Pro 10. Um, these are controlling the actual sounds. So what quantization is supposed to do is basically take these notes that are played like off of the grid, okay, and snap them in place onto the grid. All right, if you look right here, you have one, two, three, four, which all represents the, each measure. You have these different um, notches, okay? And these all represents different time measurements within each measure. So like for instance, from one to one, three, that's gonna be a half note, all right? From one to two, that's a whole note. Uh, right here would be a 16th note. Right here would be an eighth note. So from one to here, and this would be a quarter note. And it goes on, okay? And so it's kind of more so getting into music theory when it comes to quantization, but basically it's just gonna, just in a layman's terms or a simple way to look at it, it's just gonna take whatever you play right here and snap it in place to where it's supposed to sound good. Now, now that we understand that, that's cool and all, but there's a whole lot of different options here. It's like, man, okay, if I'm brand new to this, which one do I choose? Most people all know about the one over eight or the one over 16th, but let me just explain to you what you would, uh, why would you would use either one of these and what you know situation you would use these different um, metrics. So let's highlight just the uh, hi-hats, okay? If you look here, the hi-hat patterns has a whole lot of notes within this pattern, right? And so a good rule of thumb um, is to make sure that if you have something that has a lot of notes in the pattern, you're more than likely gonna to want to use a higher number on the quantization metrics. The reason why is again, taking this back to the different types of notes that will be in measures, which would be like whole notes, half notes, eighth notes, quarter notes, once like 16th notes. That's what you're going to wanna to select here. So these are mainly 16th notes right here, or excuse me, eighth notes even. So I could technically hit this and it's gonna lock it in place. How do I know it's eighth notes? If I zoom in here, again, I told you, from here to here is an eighth note, all right? From here to here is a 16th note. So check, check this out. Um, pretty much once I went ahead and clicked on that, I had this highlighted and clicked on it. Basically, it locked all of the notes on this pattern to where they should be if it lines up with the eighth notes, okay? Um, if I wanted to say, let me go ahead and um, undo this. Now, if say if it had more notes in it, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold down option and drag it over. And what that's gonna do now is pretty much create 16th notes throughout all the measures. So it's, it's gonna speed up the hi-hats obviously, but you're gonna want, instead of the one over eight, which is represents the eighth note, you're gonna wanna select a one over 16th or a one over 32. All right, so if we click, click on this one over 16th, it should lock all of these notes in place. Now, 
as you saw here some of them were still off and the reason why is sometimes like if you have so many different notes you need to go up in the metrics okay so 1 over 32 and it still didn't all the way lock it in place but um, overall it's all about the, the the metrics here on this this is just I, I kind of messed this up when I added all the other hi-hats so kind of kind of complicated a little bit but 1 over 16 for for patterns that have like a lot of notes and one over eight for more basic patterns. So for instance, this piano, this would be a more basic pattern. So I would probably do like one over 18. I mean, excuse me, one over eight. And you saw that now snap on right on point on the grid. Same thing with the clap. It has like, like just barely any, you know, notes in there. You could even do one over four and it's going to snap it right in place. Same with the kick. You know what I mean? And so that's just a good rule. To keep in mind, the less notes, the lower the number is going to be on the quantization. The higher, the more notes, the higher the number is going to be. All right. So that's one tip that I want to put in place here. Now, let's go ahead and listen to our pattern now uh, after we quantized it or quantized it. Let's see. bet so everything is quantized now there are some other metrics that you can use and look at here within everything um let's also let's just go ahead and start with the kick and the clap let's just do that so we're going to start with the kick and the clap here let's see if i can find both of those hmm. okay Anyway, I was trying to let y'all see both of these. I don't know why I didn't do it. All right. There you go. Where is the... Okay. Doesn't matter. Um, that's the clap. So it should be showing it. Okay. It, it does have it all in there. All right. My bad. It's all on the same middle C here. So anyway, let's talk about the swing now. All right. So what the swing is supposed to do... Um, is pretty much snap it in place, but move it just a little off of the grid so that it kind of sounds more natural. That's the whole point of the swing is to make it sound more natural. Um, so when you when you put it like say one over eight swing A, it's supposed to give it a, just a little bit of a different vibe. So instead of it sounding so rigid and so robotic, when you start adding that swing into it, it sounds a little more natural. Let's check this out. Now that was actually a um, a more slight uh, feel on this. Like if you really want the swing to be in there, put it over one over six. Uh, excuse me, one over eight swing C. And now let's listen to it. And when you start getting to like past B, like it starts getting real choppy. So really that one over six, that one over eight swing A, just nudges it just a little bit to where it doesn't sound so rigid. It's like really barely there for you to hear, but you can kind of feel it more. So that between the one over six, uh, one over eight swing A or one over eight swing B, I would salute, choose those. Um, now you can also do this over the hi hats here. Again, you wanna, since you have more notes, you want to go ahead and go ahead and go with like a, a 16 1 over 16 so let's do like 1 over 16 swing b let's see how it sounds now with the hi-hats and so it kind of starts sounding choppy with the b but you get what i'm talking about man so like 1 over 16 swing a is a pretty dope one to go with man let me see this do everything and I kind of messed up by doing one over 16 instead of one over eight for this piano because again you know that had less notes in this so we'll do one over eight and that fixed it you always want to do the right metric 
for each track. All right, and then we also have some of the other metrics there too. I'm just gonna basically double this by pushing Command D, and I'm just gonna draw in a pattern or play something in here as well for the hi hats. It's gonna be a little bit different. cool so you see how i played that like off a little bit and it kind of was off but um it's kind of like i played it in between the measures in, in a way so so for this this type of uh pattern instead of doing one over eight swing a if i did that you saw like the notes disappeared some of them even if i did that one over 16 it's not going to lock it in place like I want it. For something like this, you want to do the triplets. And so, again, same rules apply. The more notes in the pattern, the higher you're going to go, and the less notes in the pattern, the lower you're going to go. So I'll do 1 over 16. It looks like they kind of still took it out. Um, so 1 over 12. And then now it locks it in place. Let's listen to now. And so you could basically just get different vibes and different feels with your music based on what you uh, select. Most of the beats that you're going to be making, you're not going to be using this uh, the triplets. The triplets are a more advanced uh, metric that you're going to be using. Most of the metrics are going to be either the, over here, just the regular one, notes, the regular types of notes here, or the swing notes right there. But um, yeah, man, if this helped you out any, let me know in the uh, comment section below. Appreciate y'all watching. Also, make sure you check out our website, beatmakingbasics.com. We have courses that you can purchase on there, royalty-free loop packs and drum kits. We also have a one-on-one -on -one service. So make sure you head over there, man. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you in the next video. We're out.